Hello, welcome to the AI loop. Today we're going to be talking about transformers. So let's start. Let's just say we have two sentences. Now I'll represent the first sentence by the word letter A and the second sentence by the letter B. Now let's say sentence A represents where are you and sentence B represents an answer to the sentence A. Let's say I'm here. Now as a human, it's pretty easy for us to go from sentence A to sentence B. Of course, if you know the language and the context. But how would you teach a machine to do that? A machine to translate from one form of message into another. Now, today we'll be looking at transformers, which has been highly effective at doing that. The transformer is not the only architecture. There have been many architectures that have been proposed to do this in the field of deep learning. But uh, if you've been following the advancements in AI recently, uh, you'd know the transformers are capable of doing much more than translation and are widely used in the field. So let's take a look at it. I'm going to go through a very high level overview of the transformers and not go much in detail about them. We'll be releasing a list of videos going into uh, architecture components and detailing through them and hope this helps. So let's start. We have two blocks for transformer. One is the encoder block and the other is the decoder block. Now let me just name the encoder and the decoder. So we have two blocks, an encoder and a decoder block. Uh, this paper and architecture have been proposed by Google researchers and they have identified that in transduction tasks, it's highly effective to have an encoder and a decoder. So they've come up with this architecture and it's proven to be effective. So the names are self-explanatory of what they do. Basically encoder encodes a representation and then decoder decodes the encoded representation into the de desired output. So let's say we have sentence A here. The goal is to give sentence A as an input to the encoder and the encoder output being carried on to the decoder and the decoder decoding the word B. Sorry, the sentence or whatever it is. Now, how does this happen? Remember that whatever is happening inside these blocks is a numerical manipulation. So we cannot give uh, English letters or alphabets or any language in there. So what we do is take our input A and get a vector that represents our input. Now let's say A and let's say there's like a bunch of numbers in here, four numbers. Now this number would be considered a good representation of A. So we take this vector and we pass this to the encoder. And the encoder outputs another vector that's an encoder representation of A. And this is passed into decoder. And finally, we get the output vector. Now the output vector should be a vector that's representing B. And there are multiple ways of how we transform this vector into the desired output and how we reach there. I'll be talking about that more later, but let's just take a slight detailed look into what the encoder block and the decoder block consists of. Now let me just move that over there. So here is an encoder block. Let me just write this way. Yeah, so an encoder block consists of two main components. The first one is an attention block. And the second one is a feed forward neural network. Now, the feed forward neural network is pretty simple. It's basically like converting a vector into another space. That's what it's doing. It's a neural network that takes in the input and gives an output. So it takes in like a vector gives out a vector by like multiply with a bunch of weights in here. Uh, and the attention module is doing the same thing to it takes in a vector, gives out a vector. But the attention module is basically like, let's say we have three words, A, B, and C. 
what attention module really does is to make the encoder aware of how much attention it has to pay to each of these words. So it basically uh, makes the encoder know what's really important in the input that really helps the transformer architecture transform really well or do whatever task is being asked to do. Now let's just take these out of here. Let me draw a decoder block here. So a decoder block consists of three components. The first one is an attention and the second one is an attention to and the third one is the feed for your network. Now these two are similar. When I talk these, now these two are similar. I'll just take that off. But these two attention modules and this attention module are not similar. Now we can assume in a way that these two are similar. The way they work is similar, except that the input for this changes. So let's talk about that later. But this attention module is slightly modified version. So what happens is when we have an initial vector representation for our input and we pass that into the encoder, it goes into both of these blocks and we get a very rich representation of our input. Sorry for the drawing again. And this is passed into the decoder and the decoder is able to decode the desired output. So that's what's really happening in the transformer block. but uh, as proposed in the paper, it's just not one block. Now, when I say block, I refer to the whole thing. So there are like six of these encoder blocks and six of these decoder blocks. So the input is going through the encoder block six times, and then the output is of the encoder is passed to the decoder block. Again, goes through the decoder block six times, and we can receive the uh, original output. Now that said, uh, this is how Transformer works on a very, very high level. Uh, I'll be talking about concepts like attention module and feed for neural networks and other interesting stuff in the field of deep learning. Do let me know in the comments if you want to hear something special or anything specific. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.